And the technique for adding up this infinite sum, we will multiply each of these terms by the common ratio. And we know that the common ratio is 4 ninths. That's the number we're multiplying by to go from one term to the next. And we'll multiply the entire sum by that, which means we're looking at 4 ninths s, and we're just distributing to each of the terms, meaning that 4 over 9 times 4 over 9, that is just 4 over 9 squared, 4 over 9 squared times 4 over 9, that is just 4 over 9 cubed. And you probably noticed the pattern at this point. 4 over 9 cubed times 4 over 9 is 4 over 9 to the fourth, and so on. It's essentially every term from the original one minus the first term. And to figure out this sum, what we can do next is take the original sum and subtract this new sum multiplied by that common ratio, 4 ninths s, and notice that we start with this top sum and we're subtracting the blue one down below. We have 4 ninths, but there is no 4 ninths here, so that will remain. And we have 4 over 9 squared minus 4 over 9 squared, those will cancel. 4 ninths cubed minus 4 ninths cubed, those cancel. These terms cancel as well, and so on. Every single term in this infinite sum will cancel out during subtraction, except for this first one here. And because of that, we now have an equation, a finite equation, that we can solve for s. And if we subtract these fractions, we could find a common denominator. This is just 9s over 9, which makes this 5s over 9. And to solve this equation for s, let's multiply each side of this equation by 9, which gives us 5s is equal to 4. Let me make it clear, this is an s, not a 5, but we have 5 times s is 4. We could divide each side by 5 to find that s is 4 fifths, meaning that this infinite sum here is simply 4 fifths. And we can always add up these infinite geometric sums, these geometric series, whenever the common ratio, the term we're multiplying by going from one term to the next, is less than 1. If it's greater than one, then this technique does not work. So let's go back up to our earlier formula. We found that this group of terms here is simply three multiplied by s, but s is four fifths, which makes all of this 12 over five. And we can rewrite a here a is just the square root of 3 over 16 times s squared. And on the inside, we now have 4 plus 12 fifths. But if we add these fractions, 4, this is really just 20 over 5. And 20 fifths plus 12 fifths, that's 32 fifths. Meaning that a is root 3 over 16 times s squared times by 32 over 5. And at this point, we just need to simplify we now can notice that we have 32 over 16. That is just 2 when we simplify. And nothing else simplifies, meaning that we have twice the square root of 3 divided by 5. And this is all multiplied by s squared. And this is the formula for finding the area of the Koch snowflake when we know the original side length of an equilateral triangle. And if we go back up to the original drawing of the Koch snowflake, again, what we found is that the area of this is twice the square root of 3 over 5 multiplied by s squared. And if, let's say, s is equal to 1, which in this drawing would be this length here, or really any of these sides in the original equilateral triangle, this is s, and we're saying this is equal to 1, then the area of this entire figure would just be twice the square root of 3 over 5. And just to see this as a decimal, the area would be approximately, since it's an irrational number, 0 0.69282 
zero and this would go on forever. But this does confirm that even though the length around this figure, the perimeter is infinite, the area is a finite number.